I see the words on this page They speak of beauty and your grace How you came to set a sinner free It's your word, it's your decree The chains of the past Can no longer hold me By your blood I have been If you have your Bibles, I'm going to be reading in Proverbs 15 and 33. I have a lot of scriptures, so you can write them down. If I go too fast, just write them down. And then from there, we're going to go to Proverbs 5 and 9. So the, the first one is Proverbs 15 and 33. And then from there, we'll go to Proverbs 5 and 9. When you got it, say amen. 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 We'll stand for the reading of the word today. If you are able to do so, we appreciate that. We do that in honor of the word of the Lord because they did that in the Bible. So we try to do it also. Amen. Proverbs 15, 33, and the word of God reads, The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. And before honor is humility. Yes. Proverbs 5 and 9. Verse 9 it says, Lest thou give thine honor unto others, and thy years unto the cruel. Praise God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for the word of the Lord and for all that you have already done today. We ask you now, Lord, that you would open up our heart, our mind, and our soul to receive your word, that we may take it and apply it to our life, that it bring forth fruit unto your glory. Lord, we love you and we praise you. And everyone say in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Praise God. Thank you for standing in honor of the word of the Lord today. Amen. I'm going to talk to you from this thought today, to honor or dishonor. To honor or dishonor. So I'm going to read those scriptures again. Proverbs 15, 33 says, The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. And how many believe we've got to have instruction? Amen. For anyone in this life that thinks that they don't need instruction or that they don't need wisdom or don't like to receive instructions, the scriptures call them a fool. Yes, it does. It calls them a fool. And it says that the, that the wicked and that fools despise instruction that they despise wisdom they don't care about that they don't want that they don't want anyone to tell them what to do amen and the the fear of the lord here in the scriptures it says is the instruction of wisdom amen and god has plenty of instructions for us to follow amen from the time you're born all the way into the time you become fully grown amen and whether you're male or female it doesn't matter and if you're male, then God has instructions for us as men. And if you're a woman, God has instructions for you as a woman. Amen. And to abide by these things is wisdom. Praise God. And to live by them and abide by them and follow them and be obedient unto them. Amen. Brings glory and honor not only to God, but it will bring honor unto you and to your families. Yes, it will. Amen. But the scripture here says, but before honor is humility. And the word humility there means humble or to embarrass. That's what it means. Humility means to humble or to embarrass. To place yourself beneath something or someone. Amen. To allow something else to be more superior in your life. And that takes work. If you're going to be the people of God, if I'm going to be a follower of God, I've got to learn to humble myself. Amen. You can pray all you want to God. I need you to humble me. No. The scripture says to humble yourself in the sight of God. Amen. To humble yourself and he will exalt you. Amen. That's, that's, that's important for you to know here. Because in order for me to be a vessel of honor, I've got to learn to humble myself. I've got to learn to allow myself, so to speak, to be Humbled or embarrassed? See, and that's not something we want to do. 
No, it's not God's goal or desire to embarrass us. That is not his goal to do that. Amen. But let me, let me tell you, if you live by pride, then God will break you down and you will become embarrassed. Yes, you will. And so unless you give your honor unto others, amen, you, there is a way that we can uh, yield ourselves to the influence of people and will give our honor away. We can give our years away unto the cruel, unto the wicked, unto those that despise instruction and wisdom. And when you do that, you are losing things that are valuable unto God. Amen? Amen. Would you put it in the hand of someone that doesn't care about it? What would you do with this type of honor that God values? Amen. When God gives us things to value that's important to him and we give it away as if it's meaningless. Think about that. If you were to lend something of value of your possession unto anybody, a family member, a friend, a child, a parent, amen, and they don't take care of that that you value so very much, amen, you will lose respect and confidence of that individual because they did not cherish nor take care or value what you had lent to them, amen, to hold for you for a little while, amen. And so when God ex expects his people to be people of honor, and we give it away. And we didn't value it. The scripture talks about those that had talents that he gave away. He gave one, one talent. He gave one, five. And he gave another one, uh, so many. Amen. I, I don't remember it all right now. Amen. But when he came back to the one that he gave one talent unto, he called him a wicked servant. Because he didn't value what was given unto him. And the scripture says that when the master came, he told his servants, take that one that was given unto him and give it to the one that was given five. Amen. Because he valued what was given to him so much that he multiplied it. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so what little bit God has given me, I want to multiply it so it can grow, so it can become something of value, not only to God, but unto me as well. And in order for me to do that, I've got to humble myself and get to work with this thing that he has given me. It's called honor. Proverbs 13 and 18, it says, poverty and shame shall be to him that refuses instruction. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuses instruction. And the prisons today are full of people that didn't want to follow the law. Come on now. And what becomes of them? They have no jobs. They have no money. I'll take that back. They got jobs with no pay. Amen. Shame becomes their reputation. And they, why? Because they refused instruction. But he that regards reproof shall be honored. And many of them begin to find God in there. And when they begin to find God, guess what? They begin to value the instruction of the word of the Lord. And God begins to change their whole mindset. Instead of talking down on the authorities and the guards, rather they begin to learn to respect them and make friends with them. Amen. And pull them into them. And they receive good influence and good reputation despite the outfit that they're wearing. Why? Because they begin to value what honor is and obedience and instruction. Amen. They have to to learn to humble themselves first before honor could come. Right. Proverbs 21, 21. He that followeth after righteousness and mercy finds life, righteousness, and honor. Proverbs 26 and 1. As snow is in the summer and rain in the harvest, so is honor not seemly for a fool. And we are living in a generation where many people despise honor and do not value it. They do not value it. We really don't often see snow in the summer, do we? No, we don't. We really don't see rain in the harvest, and no, neither do the farmers expect that. Amen. Rather, they expect a good outcome of the crops that they have planted. And so, so honor is not seemly for a fool. It is not common that you're going to find that they appreciate or value honor. I'm going somewhere with this. The word honor in the, in the Webster's def, uh, Dictionary, it means a good name, or public esteem. It means reputation, a showing of usually merited respect, a person of superior standing, a holder of high office, one whose worth brings respect 
chastity, purity, a keen sense of ethical conduct and integrity. The word honorable means deserving of respect or high regard, great renown, credible conduct, reputation that is not tarnished, integrity, guided by a keen sense of duty and ethical conduct. I don't expect you to remember all that, but I want to let you know that it's these things that are not valued by our culture today. It's rather what is popular. What does Google say is the most popular item? That's what I want to do. That's what I want to follow. That's what I want to buy. That's who, who, who I want to look like. They don't value honor anymore. To be honorable is to be brave, committed, and self-sacrificing. It means living by a code and a higher standard of living, putting the group before the individual. Amen. Traditionally, it was warriors, amen, of old time, amen, who prided themselves on their honor because they fought valiantly, not because they had to or because they were getting paid to, but rather because they chose to, amen, and they were willing to give of their own lives, amen, to fight and be victorious, and with that came honor. Men and women who would fight hard for something deeply they believed in, amen, received honor. Elite groups in this life, honor is crucial to them. I think about the military, amen, the Marines, the Navy, the Army, and the Air Force, amen, who really promote honor. They do. They promote honor, even though many of them will fail at it because they have their own agenda in mind. Many only go there for a paycheck, but when it comes to the battlefield, amen, they begin to find out, I'm not in this for this. I didn't come here for this. I really didn't care much about the country. I just wanted a paycheck. And we'll find out who really are the honorable and who are the dishonorable. Amen. That is the honest to God truth. Amen. Universities respect those who graduate with honors. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. And let me tell you something. Just because people graduate, not everyone graduates with honors. If you graduate with honors, that means you worked harder and you had a higher code of conduct that you were to follow and you had higher standards of grades that you were expected to make. Amen. And therefore, with that passing grade came honor with it. Amen. And when it comes honor, amen, it will be shown not only on that piece of paper, but by the decorations that is placed upon an individual when they are receiving honor. Amen. And when they walk in the line of all the other graduates, the ones with honor stand out amongst the rest because they put forth the extra time. They put forth the extra work. They put forth the extra sacrifice, amen, to receive that decoration, amen, which would give them, amen, a high esteemed rate of of conduct and integrity, amen, and honor. Well, I know we're not all shouting about that, but I'm going somewhere, like I said. But today's culture is confused this and have esteemed pride rather than honor. Sports players are all about pride. Comedians are about pride. Movie stars in Hollywood promotes pride. Majority of these pursue their ambitions for money and with pride because they want their name to be blasted amongst the rest. Amen. That I am the greatest of this and I am the greatest of that. I'm the greatest rap star. I'm the greatest, amen, movie star. I have all the trophies and the accolades and I want people to clap after me. Majority of those that seek after honor do not seek praise for it. No. Amen. They seek honor because they feel like it's their obligation and their duty, amen, to receive this type of honor for themselves, for their family, and for their God. But pride, on the other hand, amen, demands the attention. It demands the focus. It demands popularity. It demands, amen, all the attention, amen, because of look how much money I have and look what I can buy. That's what pride brings. Amen. Satan himself was the same way in heaven when God created him with all the jewels, amen, that you, man could ever, amen, want to cherish all the diamonds and the gold and the sapphires and the emeralds 
emeralds and the rubies and everything that man cherishes, Satan was decorated with it. Amen. And he began to pride himself amongst the other angels and say, I am better than everybody else. As a matter of fact, I'm even better than the one who sits on the throne. You see what pride demanded? Pride demanded glory. Amen. But God, amen, who was worthy of honor and praise, amen, he created, amen, glory and honor. God doesn't need jewels to shine, and neither does his people, amen, that follow after him, need not the jewels or bling or diamonds or gold or pearls to shine. Why? Because his people ought to be people of honor. I don't need such decorations because in the spirit I shine and glimmer. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. But not honor. You see, honor comes with commitment. If Satan had honor, he would have been committed unto God in heaven. He would have had a higher standard and would have appreciated what was given unto him. But rather, he began to declaim it as his own. He began to declare it as his own. And therefore, honor left him because he had no humility. And he didn't appreciate instruction. And therefore, he became a fool, despising instruction, putting down humility and lifted up in pride amen and he was arrayed amen and focused rather on his beauty and pride rather than honor and humility and that has what's become of the people of this culture today they want would rather be lifted up in pride amen and beauty because honor comes with commitment and high standards and people who regard, regard honor regard their reputation. They will esteem reputation above what money can buy and above money even itself. That's why the scripture says the love of money is the root of all evil. And they that love it will live by it. Amen. They that love it shall eat of it. Amen. Shall eat of the fruit thereof. Why? Because they don't honor humility. And they don't honor instruction. And therefore their life does not bring God honor and humility. Nobody achieves honor simply because they're paid to do so. It's doing things above my pay grade that brings honor, or even completely without pay. Above property, above materialistic things. You see people who strive for honor value certain things that others with pride don't honor. People who strive for honor, they value courage. Hello. Courage is a mental or moral strength to persevere, amen, to withstand danger, to look fear in the eyes in the midst of difficulty and go anyways, amen. Honor will have courage. People who appreciate honor, appreciate integrity, amen, it's a higher code, it's a higher standard of living. That means I'm gonna keep this ethical living, this higher standard and esteem myself higher when people are watching and when they're not watching. Amen. That's what brings honor. Amen. Solidarity and hospitality, a sense of purpose and meaning, all the definitions that pertain to honor and nothing, nothing has ever mentioned hu humor in honor. And everything that has to do with honor, you won't find humor in it. Humor, although enjoyable, yet it will not bring you what honor deserves because humor is easy to be obtained. But honor takes work and commitment and difficulties ahead of us saying that I'm going to do it anyways. Amen. That brings honor. Amen. It is these very things that this culture lacks and has brought dishonor to the church even in America. Think about the government system today. Those offices were to be held in high esteem and to be honored by the people. And now today, it has become the laughing stock of comedians and entertainment and people who even hold positions of honor. It has become just a laughing game. Amen. To all of the world and to all of the stage of the world and all the voters and all the people of America, everywhere, it has become a gazing laughing stock. Because the people who hold these high positions, they themselves do not honor it. Right. This is also why many who hold positions in the church 
that the world doesn't even hold in high esteem high positions in the church anymore because so many have abused their office. There have become so many ministers that have fallen into adultery, that have fallen into fornication, that have been having inappropriate relationships, amen, with children in the church, amen, with people, with their brothers, wives, amen, even with men and men and ladies and ladies, amen, it has become a position of dishonor, and it was never meant to be that way. I'll tell you why. It's because they began to despise instruction. They began to despise humility. They began to despise the things that God honors and they were rather looking at the things that the world honors and appreciates and now they've got it backwards and instead of seeking honor they're seeking after pride and those that live by pride have become vessels of dishonor amen Whoo. It is these very things that this culture lacks and has brought dishonor to God, the church, and our families. Praise the name of Jesus. Honor is not something that's promoted anymore. There are certain cultures that are honor-based cultures that when honor is lost or taken by someone, it is their duty and responsibility to gain it back. Amen. That's the truth. You see, in America, when someone gets in trouble in, 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 our, in our law system, they're not the, the, the responsibility is taken away from the individual and the judges and, and our government. They're the ones that take the sole control of what's going to happen to that person afterward. Amen. And so they take away the initiative or the responsibility of the individual making it right. In honor-based cultures, it is still the responsibility of that individual. Despite his, uh, his sentence, despite what his consequences are, it's still their duty to make it right. Amen. After everything they've done and to gain honor back to themselves and to their family. Amen. It's a job. It's a commitment it's something that they have to live by because without honor they would rather die Amen. to honor or dishonor and they will do whatever it takes to prove themselves worthy of honor again honor encourages self-reliance and independent action you've got to work at it you've got to want it you've got to do it second timothy i want you to turn there second timothy chapter 2 and verse 20, you see, because this nation, this culture, and this world has be become influenced by Satan himself, amen, and the same thing that lifted him up is what's now lifting up the culture of America, and it has infiltrated the church, and they are no longer holding positions or things of God in high esteem. And it's sad. It grieves my heart. If it wasn't so... So many people wouldn't rise up in rebellion against the pastor. So many people wouldn't rise up, amen, and dishonor the position of pastor himself. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. It says, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and of earth, some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself of these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. What was he talking about? Purge himself of what? Purge himself of these things. Go back to verse 16 in that same chapter. And it begins to tell us what to rid ourselves of. But shun profane and vain babblings. Rid yourselves of negative and empty conversations. Behind one another's back. Amen. For they will increase unto more ungodliness. Wow. This is why we encourage people who are interested in somebody else not to have conversations on the phone with the opposite sex because sooner or later there's a, there's a hidden agenda. Amen. And if, oh my God. Amen. If you can't do it in front of everybody, amen, then the enemy is going to creep in and there's going to be vain, empty bab babblings and conversations that ought not never happen. Amen. Amen. And, and the scripture says, purge yourself of these things. It increases more ungodliness. Verse 17, and their word will eat as doth the canker worm. Amen. Of whom, and he begins to name people, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus. Can you imagine if there was such a man of God today 
that sent letters to all the churches with your names in it because you brought dishonor unto God. I dare to say there ain't enough preachers today with that kind of backbone that'll send letters out to all the churches and say, listen, these two right here, they wouldn't listen. Here are their names. I try to warn them. I try to tell them. But now they have become vessels of dishonor, examples of what not to do. And that's exactly what Paul did. He sent it to Timothy, who was the pastor of another church. Oh, it's quiet now. Well, I got your attention yet? That's how much they valued honor. That's how much God was not playing with those who dishonored the name of Jesus Christ, who dishonored the name of Jesus Christ and his church, who dishonored the positions of God, of the man of God and of the people of God. And he wrote their names down and he said, who concerning the truth, they have erred saying that the resurrection is past. They were talking nonsense. Now, if you read there in verse 18, it says that they said the resurrection is past already and they overthrew the faith of some. They convinced other people of lies. Now, right now, that may not sound like a big deal to you. But in Paul's day, that was a very big deal. And you got excommunicated for that kind of talk. Hello, somebody. But all day long, we can talk bad about one another and put one another down. Talk bad about the pastor and how he makes decisions and chooses things. I told you, you better appreciate the good preaching when it comes. Because sooner or later, some real hard truths are going to come out. Amen. And when we talk bad about this and how much money I spent and I ain't got that and I ain't got this. And we begin to complain. You better be careful. Amen. That you don't speak empty, vain babblings. Amen. That brings dishonor to the name of God and he said that these brought dishonor to the church some to honor and some to dishonor by their corrupt opinions and their wicked lives their poor decision making amen they did not value instruction and wisdom amen and by their example they became vessels of dishonor go to first Timothy now Woo. First Timothy, let me see, I lost the chapter. I believe it's chapter number two. Let me find it. First Timothy chapter 1, excuse me, verse number 19. Holding faith and good conscience, which some having put away concerning the faith, they have made shipwreck. All right? They put away these things. Verse 20, of whom is, and he mentions one name that's already mentioned, and now he mentions another name. Of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto who? Oh, no, no, no. It don't say Satan. He delivered unto Satan that they may learn not to blaspheme. Two letters. He wrote Hymenaeus' name. Hymenaeus didn't have a good report. Hymenaeus brought dishonor to the church. Hymenaeus brought dishonor unto God. I don't think God is playing. Amen. If Paul was wrong, God would have spoke to Paul and said, you are not allowed to do that. How dare you? You shouldn't speak that way. You see, that's the culture we live in. We try to tell the pastor what to do. We try to tell the man of God what, to, what he should and shouldn't do. And when he shouldn't do it, that's not popular. That's not right. And we're going to blast it on Facebook and talk all bad about it on social media. Amen. Because he's not being nice. He hurt my feelings. I'm the victim here. Amen. But Paul the apostle, amen, made it clear who were those to honor and who were those to dishonor. This is not a democracy. This is a monarchy. And Jesus is the king. Amen. It is up to you and I not to despise instruction and value honor. 
Somebody say amen. amen. And Paul said, of these, I delivered to Satan. Man, you imagine that? Okay, Satan, here you go. They don't want to listen, so here you go. They're yours now. Wow. Whoa. Pastor, you just going to let them leave? I didn't let them leave. I, I delivered them to Satan because that's what they want. Why argue? Why fight? If I wanted to, I could write a bunch of letters. Oh, my God. My Lord, thank God for mercy and grace. Hello, somebody. You see, every vessel must be fit for the master's use. Everyone in the church whom God approves must be devoted to his master's service and ready for his use. Every vessel must be sanctified in his heart and prepared for every good work. Every tree must be made good so that way the fruit it produces will be good also. And everyone who eats of that fruit or shares or receives something from that individual also will be good and bear more fruit. Hello. Amen. And so it brings all honor unto yourself unto your reputation and unto our god and our church praise god first thessalonians chapter 4 and verse number 3 it says first thessalonians 4 and verse number 3 for this is the will of god even your sanctification we should sanctify ourselves that you should abstain from fornication oh we used to have a bigger church we used to have a lot of people here. Oh, but they wanted to fornicate. They wanted to have their boyfriends, and they wanted to have their girlfriends, and they despised instruction, and they didn't want to listen to the man of God. They didn't want to follow the church, amen. They wanted to do their thing, and so now they have become vessels of dishonor, amen. I'm sad to say I hate it. I don't like it. I'm not here to point fingers or just talk bad about people, but I want to show you that even those of dishonor can be an example of what we ought not do. Amen. Amen. I didn't write it. I just got to preach it to you. Verse number four, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. In other words, you should know how to carry yourself. You should know how to follow the word of God. If you've been here for any length of time, you know we're going to preach the truth here. Amen. You know that we're not going to sugarcoat it. No, I'm not picking you out or pointing the finger at you. You know where you're guilty at, and you've got to deal with you. If you're going to be a vessel of honor and be held in high esteem, amen, it don't matter what I promote you to, amen, you got to walk that walk, and you got to talk that talk. Amen. You can have all the offices and positions and names, but if you don't carry yourself right, amen, then you will be a vessel of this. Honor. It doesn't matter what position you hold. Amen. You got to know how to carry your vessel. You got to know how to conduct yourself. You got to know how to walk in sanctification. And my consecration and my sacrifice, amen, speaks for itself. I don't have to tell anybody that I've been consecrated. Amen, that will speak for me. Amen. Why? Because I'm a vessel of honor. Because I'm a vessel of honor. I don't want to bring dishonor to his name. I don't want to bring dishonor to the church. I don't want to bring dishonor to my family. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Amen. It doesn't, you see, the president of the United States holds one of the highest offices. It should be the most honorable office in America. Amen. But because they put pranksters in there, amen, and they want only things that apply to self rather than for the greater good. Amen. Then, in other words, the individual who's supposed to have honor is now dishonored before everybody. It doesn't even matter the good that they've done. All that they see is the dishonor. Same thing applies to those in the church. It doesn't matter all the good you've done. All it takes is a little disobedience. It's just a little dishonor. And all they see is the dishonor. Are you a vessel of honor or are you a vessel to dishonor? I'll tell you why the denominal churches are full, packed to the rim. Parking lots are packed. They got ushers in the parking lot with, with fluorescent road uh, vests on. 
and they're guiding people where to park. My Lord, I can't wait to get there one day. But I'll tell you how that happens first. Amen. They don't tell anything, tell anybody anything about honor. They don't tell anybody anything about instruction. It's just come as you are, dress how you want to dress, be who you want to be. Nobody's wrong. Everybody's right. We can all just love one another. Just put in a dollar or two. God bless you. Have a good day. All of you are saved. Who wouldn't want to go there? Who wouldn't want to go there? If there was ever the greatest pastor, Jesus was the greatest pastor that ever walked the planet of the earth. Amen. He was the greatest pastor. Amen. And let me tell you something. He only had 12 faithful followers. He only had 12. He didn't have millions. He didn't have thousands. They only had a multitude when he was feeding them. But when he was preaching, they all walked away. And he looked at the other, the rest of them, at the 12 that were left. And he said, will you also go away? And they said, oh, master, these things that you say, they are hard sayings. Who can be saved and he said listen either follow me amen or you can follow Satan amen and follow me as I follow God amen and he told one let the dead bury the dead and you follow me he said get rid of all of that amen take no money for your journey get rid of that too amen and let's go and follow the ways of God amen. Amen. nobody preached like Jesus he said a rich man I tell you, it's hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. He said, do you hear that? Rich. And nowadays, we have the celebrities trying to set the tone or the pace or the example for the church because they want to say Jesus every now and then. And now all of a sudden, they're the examples? No, because they are not vessels of honor. They have not committed to it. They haven't worked hard for it. They didn't hold it in high esteem. Just because you say Jesus doesn't make you a vessel of honor. I don't care how much Kanye West talks about Jesus. I'm going to tell you something until he becomes a vessel of honor I'm not following him I'm not following the rap stars I don't care what they say preachers say oh no give me somebody that's been in the fight and will do it for no money and will do it for no accolades and will do it for no jewelry or no cars give me somebody that will do it because they love God and they love the people That, my friend, is the vessel of honor. He don't need a penny. He don't need a dollar. He don't care what you put in there. That's between you and God. But he still shows up to prayer. And he still shows up to preach. And he still loves you. And he still cares about you. Give me a man of God. A man that has been committed. That has worked at it. I'm not, I didn't say someone who's perfect. I said someone who's committed. Someone who's been there. Someone who's failed. And ain't afraid to tell you that he failed. And got back up and say, I still want to receive honor. But people, they have allowed things to come into the church. And dishonor is what's being exalted rather than honor. And it ought not be just because somebody says, I'm not guilty, doesn't mean they're innocent. Praise the name of Jesus. If someone's wrong, then they ought to be wrong. And they ought to wear that shame. And they ought to be wrong and come and bring fruit, meat for repentance. You see what I'm saying? John the Baptist even declared it. Don't just say you're sorry. Bring me some evidence that's fruit of your repentance. Bring me. Don't just tell me. Show me. Live it. Be it. Amen. Let me see the example. Let me see the aftermath. Let me see the attitude behind it. Let me see the personality behind it. That brings honor, my friend. Not how much money you got in the bank. Not how much you know everybody. Not how many followers you got. That don't mean anything to God. But it's somebody that has worked for it and has lived to a higher standard of living that has followed the word of God even when it's unpopular. I'm going to tell you right now, this kind of preaching is not popular. I appreciate our visitors that are here. 
I hope you come back. But if anything you're going to know about Pastor Luna is I don't sugarcoat anything around here. I'm going to tell you the truth. Amen. Ain't no sugar about my vessel. This vessel's made of salt, baby. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, thus saith the Lord. Amen. I'm going to tell you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Amen. And that's why I don't have a vessel decorated with gold and silver. I don't need no jewelry. I don't need no bling bling. Amen. I'll tell you why. All the gold is on the inside. All the shining is on the inside. All the jewelry is on the inside. I want to be a vessel that brings honor unto God. You may be seated. I'm not done yet. 1 Timothy 5 and 17. It said, let the elders that rule, rule well, be counted worthy of double honor. Just because you're older than somebody doesn't make you an elder. Let me tell you, it takes work to receive the position or title of elder. Your name and how old you are does not make you an elder. Not in the church. Yes, I believe in respecting our elders, but in the church, just because you're old is not automatic position. Amen. If you're going to receive double honor, you better have double respect. You better have double humility. You better have double commitment. You better have double sacrifice, double ties and our hello. Amen. You got to work for that honor because it's not going to be given to you. You've got to work for it. Whoa. Especially they who labor in word and doctrine. Verse 18, for the scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn. The laborer is worthy of his reward. Talking about the man of God. Romans 13 and 6, talking about the ministry. For this cause pay you tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their duties. Tribute to whom tribute is due. Custom to whom custom. Fear to whom fear. Honor to whom honor. Praise the name of Jesus. Many of us, did not grow up with people who were honorable in our lives. Amen. We weren't taught honor. Amen. I'll be the first one to tell you, I didn't grow up learning the value of honor. I didn't have anyone to honor. I didn't know what honor was. I didn't know any of that. And so therefore, in my mind, those that had position and held in high esteem to me, I was taught they were arrogant and they don't care about us. I don't know. I'm not telling everybody. I'm just talking about me. They were immediately stereotyped. Those with other educations were stereotyped. Those that had position and money were stereotyped. And not all of them were wrong. Many of them worked hard and were worthy of that honor. Do you understand what I'm saying? But now that I'm living a different life and I'm changed in my mind and in my living for God, God has shown me that there are people in this life that I am allowed to honor. And that is not a weakness, church. Amen. That is not a weakness. And yet many of the scriptures, it teaches us to honor one another, to have honor in yourself, to seek after honor, obtain it, and keep it. You know, the office of the pastor is supposed to be honored. But the world is not going to honor it. So where do you think it's supposed to come from? It's supposed to come from the church. It's supposed to come from the people. But when the people don't honor the man of God, then everyone that comes in will not honor the man of God. Amen. And yes, it's his responsibility to live up to that calling and to fulfill his duties. Because if not, he will be a vessel of dishonor. And so will the church. Praise God. I don't want to bring dishonor to God or to the office that he's allowed me to operate in. Do you understand what I'm saying? Praise the name of Jesus. And so honor is something we need to learn to value. And when others are worthy of it, we should not put them down because of it. But rather because we have learned it, we value it and whoever it comes to. I hope I'm not losing some of you here. Because when it's your turn to be honored, you're going to appreciate it. You see, remember, before honor comes humility. And when honor actually comes to someone who's worthy of it, they don't pride themselves in it. Normally, you see them weep and cry. 
Because before honor comes humility. First Corinthians chapter 11, the scripture talks about that the man who was made in God's image is the honor and glory of God. Somebody say amen. amen. The woman which is to be his wife brings honor to her husband. If that woman begins to live an alternate lifestyle and begins to cheat on him and put the family down, it brings dishonor to her husband and that family name and also to the children. It brings dishonor. Why? Because of her reputation. It brings dishonor. And so the man brings honor and glory to God when he works at it. The woman brings honor to her husband. And the scripture says long hair is a woman's glory or honor. That's why you're not supposed to cut it. Because that is your glory and your honor. Praise the name of Jesus. But when that woman is disobedient, she is bringing dishonor to God. The scripture says for the man to honor his wife, which is the weaker vessel, because in not doing so, your prayers, men, are hindered, and God will not hear them when you don't honor your wife. Amen. You're better off just telling her to pray. You're better off just letting her make all the decisions because you have dishonored her. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. Amen. Because all you're doing is blowing hot air up into the sky and God ain't hearing none of that because you have dishonored her and you have brought her down and you have low esteemed her. Do you understand what I'm saying? Amen. You have put her down. Rather, she ought to feel like the queen of planet earth. Amen. She ought to feel loved, respected, and honored by her husband. And if she can't be honored by her husband, amen, sooner or later the enemy will deceive her to receive honor from someone else and it ought not be praise the name of the, I'm telling you the honest to God truth I know that's not popular but that's the truth I'm, I'm gonna take it a step further the kids are in Sunday school the scripture also says that's why you're not supposed to separate yourself from your spouse amen for too long of a time why because the enemy can come in amen and deceive one or another amen because why because you have not joined together in a while do I need to spell it out And doing so, you defraud them and dishonor them. Oh, you're getting some real truth today. Amen. Of the body of Christ. Let's talk about this. I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter number 12 and verse number 20. We're going to learn some things here. I'm almost done. Hold on. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 20. When you got it, say amen. amen. It says, but now are they many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body, which seem to be more feeble, are necessary. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. And those members of the body which we think to be less. Listen, listen. The members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. All right, now let me explain. If, let me just say it that way. If there were people here that we thought should be less honored. Maybe they are not the popular ones. Maybe they don't play the drums, so to speak. They're not the Sunday school director. They don't preach every Sunday or Wednesday. They don't really do much. Come on. And we think they should receive less honor. The scripture says for us to bestow more abundant honor upon them Amen. oh my god but you know what we do we put them down instead i'll tell you why because they get on our nerves and we get bothered and our 
patience runs out. I'll take it a step further. Children. We don't think that they should receive much honor because they're just kids. But Jesus said, let them come to me. You see, when the disciples tried to stop them, this is why I let them run and during worship. I let them worship, dance, sing, roll on the floor, jump up and down. You might think they're playing, but they're learning. They're learning to worship. And Jesus said, let the children come unto me. Amen. Upon these, we will bestow more abundant honor. So every time they sing, we ought to be clapping and telling them, good job. You did great singing. I appreciate it. Every time they do something in church, you ought to tell them, you worship good today, baby. I want to see you do it again. Daddy's so proud of you. You did a good job. I'm glad to see you dress up for church. You did a good job. Hello. We ought to bestow, bestow more abundant honor. But the ones that we don't think are worthy of it. And we think that they are less than us. That's where we err. Because we should be still more. Let me tell you something. God tore me up with this message first, church. He tore me up with this and I had to ask for forgiveness. Verse number 24. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or whether one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Amen. That's why I say it doesn't matter who gets what. If they're worthy of honor, then we should be there and support them and get behind them. Amen. And all of us rejoice together because we all receive honor. My Lord, marriage is honorable. Husbands, honor the wife. I don't want to be a vessel of dishonor. This is why I keep my sacrifices. This is why I keep my convictions. I've heard people say, well, I let go of these things because, you know, I prayed about it and, and God gave me peace. If you pray about something that's already written in the word of God, I don't care what you feel. You hear what I said? That's for all the podcast listeners too. If you got a conviction and you pray and you say, well, Lord, I just don't want to do this anymore. And if I'm wrong, convict me. You're already wrong because you're going against the scriptures. A man ought to look like a woman. Oh, my God. A man ought to look like a man and a woman ought to look like a woman. You understand what I'm saying? There ought to be a difference. Amen. That one should walk as God has created you to be. Anything that's of confusion is not of God. It's of the devil. Praise the name of Jesus. But you know what we're not doing? We're not just telling them like it is. We want to play patty cake and, and accommodate people's feelings. That ain't in the scripture. That ain't in the, Faith is not an emotion. It don't matter how I feel. It don't matter how I feel. I remember one time I got a whooping. I thought I was right. It didn't matter how I feel. I still got a whooping. But I, I guarantee you this, I didn't do it again. Hello? When I was in the world, now let me just speak of me. When I was in the world and I tried drugs, I felt good. I felt good. I felt right. I used to tell everybody, I'm going to go get my head right. I'll be back. <laughs> I used to say that, that, that's slang, sister, that you're forgetting high. <laughs> and I used to say that because my emotions lied to me. Amen. My feelings and my body and my conscience lied to me. I had no instructions of honor. Come on, somebody. And when I learned the word of God, it didn't matter how I feel. The word of God says these, they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I didn't need a feeling after that. I just said, yes, sir. I ain't doing that no more. Thank you, Jesus. So are you a vessel of honor or dishonor? I want to be a vessel of honor for God. I want to bring him glory and honor to his name. Praise the name of Jesus. Bible says, oh my God. 
oh, I'm trying to be nice. The Bible says if a man has long hair, it is a shame unto him. And it brings dishonor unto God. Now, I said that after Noah cut his hair, okay? <laughs> My brother cut his hair because God told him to. Yeah. Amen, that's right. Praise the name of Jesus. I didn't tell him. Now I can preach it in liberty, my brother. And so guess what? You have brought honor to the name of God and to the spirit that speaks to the hearts of individuals. If you'll give him a chance, he'll talk to you. If you will appreciate instruction, he'll talk to you. If you will give God a chance and listen, he will speak to you. And he'll tell you what he wants you to change. And when you listen and you're obedient, you will bring the name of God honor. I want to be able to honor those who are worthy of honor. I want to honor those who are my elders who are worthy of double honor. I want to honor the least esteemed. I want to honor one another. I want to honor my spouse. I want to have honor for the ministry. I want to honor the authorities and the powers that be. I want to honor my pastor. And most of all, I want to honor Jesus Christ, who is my Lord and Savior. And because of him, I'm alive today. John chapter 3 verse 5 I go there and I close if you honor God then you will honor his word is that right you see because the scripture said fools despise instruction and that what it said it said and they that are of pride will not humble themselves that's what it says. And so if I honor God, then I will honor his word and I will honor his instruction. John chapter 3 verse 5, you got it? Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man or, or a woman, it don't matter. Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. It didn't say if you just believe, you can go to heaven. It didn't say if you just go to church, you can go to heaven. You've got to repent of your sins. You've got to stop doing them. Be baptized in the name of Jesus that's born of water. And receive the gift of the Holy Ghost that is to be born of spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And you will be born of water and spirit. And now you can enter to the kingdom of God. Enter into the joy of the Lord. You faithful, well done servant who has brought me honor. Come on, let's stand. Come on, let's stand. I had no idea how my delivery was going to come out today. But the Spirit of the Lord is passionate about His Word. If there's anything He ever desired... Is that for his people to bring him glory and honor. I don't want to be a vessel of dishonor. I want to live for him to the best of my ability. According to the word of the Lord. Not traditions. Not what my family says. Not what this one says or that one says. Not what social media says. But according to the word of God. You have people here that God has brought to you that can be examples of honor. Vessels that we should look up to. It's not for us to judge who's the vessel of gold or silver. That's besides the point. It's those who have brought the name of God honor. And we should learn to value it. We should learn to value it. That when someone is worthy of honor, then let's esteem them in that. Because when it's my turn, I want that which I bestowed upon others to be returned unto me. You may have done things in your life, or even recently, that has dishonored the word of God. That has dishonored his name. 
and has dishonored your family. But I want you to know that we have an altar today where we can come, we can repent, we can pray, we can make it right, and we can be vessels of honor again. I want my name to be written in the Lamb's book of life, not in the letter of dishonor. Oh, God, help me. God, help me today. Come on, come on. The altar is open. I'm done. We're going to pray. You know how to possess your vessel. You know how to carry your vessel. You know how to conduct yourself. You have done well. You have worked hard. Don't give up on that now. I don't care how long it takes you. This is not a message to push you down or to beat you up. This is to lift you up and to remind you of the honor that you have earned. And now you've got to maintain it. You've got to maintain it. I'll be the first one to say, it is my opinion, maintaining it is harder than first receiving it. These altars are open. Come. If you want to repent, you're interested in salvation, you want to open up your heart to the Lord, now's the time. I'm not here to embarrass you. No one's going to embarrass you. Come, let us pray with you. Let us believe God with you. Let us love you. Sing it, Sister Gucci. I'm done. Praise the name of Jesus. To honor or dishonor.